one. So I've owned this car for a week now. And there's some things I already like about it and some things I don't really like about it. So I don't drive my car much. And when I do drive it, it's normally for long distances. So I know you guys are gonna say something in the comments about how when you're braking in a car, you shouldn't do long drives. But in my case, I kind of had to. Car had like 70 miles on it and I just did 215 miles or so as a road trip. And I mean, it was kind of inevitable. I was hoping that I wouldn't get this car before the drive, but I did get the car before the drive, so I had to take it. It's the only car I have. So the things I really like about this car, it is so agile. It's got plenty of power. Now keep in mind, I'm still breaking it in and being somewhat good about it. So I haven't given it full throttle. I try to drive it pretty conservatively. I mean, I give it a little bit of gas, but definitely no full throttle pulls. Trying not to go above 5,000 RPMs. Most of the time keeping it under 4,000 RPMs and breaking it in as gently as I can while still kind of letting the engine do what it needs to do. I mean, you gotta give it some power so the rings seal and everything like that, but don't wanna be banging the gears and going through and going all the way up to red line. It's just not good for a brand new engine. So, love the engine in this car. I love the suspension. Now I just, like I said, did over 200 miles and I put it in comfort mode. And I mean, don't get me wrong, it's not a Maybach or anything like that. It's, it's still a pretty hard car. I mean, it's meant for a track, but it was doable. I came from a 2020 Civic Si and that suspension was not as adjustable as this one but it was probably a little softer in regular mode and then definitely slightly harder in sport mode, but there was definitely no plus R mode on the SI. So having that is really nice on this car. Something I don't like about this car that you may be able to hear on this drive, which is why I'm bringing it up so early, is the road noise. The road noise in this car is awful. I mean, if you're listening to the radio, it doesn't really bother you. You can't really hear it at that point, but it does make the car just louder in general. And there's a lot of road noise from this car. Now this is the first hatchback I've ever owned. So that's kind of a new experience to me. I'm used to the trunk being closed off. And on this one, the trunk is wide open. And I got a subwoofer back there. So, it's gonna take some getting used to having a hatchback over a sedan, but so far it's been nice. The only thing is the road noise. Now, another thing I do really like about the hatchback is the fact that when I go to clean the back window, I can just open the trunk and clean the window. I used to avoid cleaning the back window in the sedan just because it was so hard to reach. And I'm a big guy, I mean, you can kind of see on video and. I'm six foot four, so climbing into the back seat of a Civic Si sedan and trying to clean the back window was something that didn't happen very often. But being able to just pop open the trunk of this car and wipe down the window is really nice. Now, gas mileage on this thing. On the highway, um, I did get, let's see exactly what it's at right now. My total drive, so 218.3 miles, I've gotten 24.4 miles per gallon and about 190 of those miles were on the highway. So it's not great on gas. Now keep in mind, I was not using cruise control at all. Um, I feel like cruise control is not good for breaking in an engine. so. I was trying to not use cruise control. I was trying to vary the speed as much as I could on the highway. So by doing that, I was giving it gas, releasing the gas. Of course, gas mileage is gonna suffer a little bit, but I used to do this drive all the time in my SI and I'd get 42 miles per gallon 
all day, every day with a loaded car and me. So definitely gets worse gas mileage that I've seen so far, but the car is just so fun. I love this car. I pulled up to my parents' house in it this morning and my dad came outside and looked at it and goes, where's the keys? And the first thing he did was take it for a drive. This car is just really fun to drive. He's had Mustangs and things like that before. So he uh, got in the car and definitely said it had more power than my SI did, which is definitely true. This thing makes a lot of power and you really can't compare a Type R to an SI. The SI is closer to the regular Civic than it is to a Type R. And I didn't realize that, like I've been a big Honda guy. I mean, I've even worked for Honda doing oil changes and things like that. And just, you kind of know the nostalgia of the Type R and you hear about the Type R, but until you've driven a Type R, it's a completely different experience. And I really enjoy this car. I mean, just, there's some things I don't like, like the road noise and it's probably not the best daily driver, not the most practical car you could buy, but in the sense of the most fun you can have while still being practical enough to justify it is there. And that's really what this car does well. It has the back seats, it has trunk space, it gets decent gas mileage having a smaller engine. It has great brakes. The gear shifting in this is unreal too. I mean, compared to my SI, just the shifting in this car is so much better than it was in my other car. Now, I'm driving through Florida, so I noticed on the drive over that my intake temperatures were about 113 on average. I mean, sometimes it would go up to 115, sometimes it would go down to 111. Keep in mind, PRO hasn't released their intake yet. So as soon as that comes out, I'm gonna get the intake. For now, that's probably all I'm gonna do with the car. There's just no sense in doing more to it than that right now. It's, it's plenty of car for what I need right now. I don't plan on taking this to the track. I don't plan on racing this at all. It's just going to be my daily driver that's going to be a fun daily driver. So keeping it as reliable as possible while still having the blow-off valve and everything would be nice. Like the blow-off valve sounds from the PRL intake, that would be nice. But I don't need a louder exhaust. I don't need a tune. I said that with my SI and ended up getting a tune. But it's a little harder with the Type R since you have to send out the ECU to be unlocked. And I don't really want to do that, especially because my dealership said that I get free oil changes and everything through them and if they plug into my obd2 port and it's unlocked they're not going to touch the vehicle i know that's not for every dealership and i've talked to other dealerships who are like we don't care we'll work on your car but the one dealership that i got the car from is really strict with modifications when i handed in my si i had stickers on the back for kicker the sound system k and n uh two-step performance, hashtag underscore TSB tuned, because that had stage plus one for 99% of its life. As soon as it hit 600 miles on that car, it was tuned, and then I traded it in with 26,000 miles. So it, uh, it spent most of its life to tuned. I never had an issue with it, and I really enjoyed that car, but this car is just a whole nother level. It's just, it handles better, it's planted. When I turn the wheel to the right and start accelerating, I don't hear wheel spin or feel wheel spin for that matter. It's just a very different experience and I really enjoy it. 